Mm. Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's ready for a great day. It's finally freaking Friday. We are getting closer, as you can see, up the clock up there. We're 125 days away from kickoff of the 20. 24 season i can't believe wow time is just literally flying by uh, another week is in the book it's hard to believe that a week ago we were in detroit with my guys game time prime time and chef david wiley waiting for the cowboys after their first pick oh my god uh, you know that we were literally second day of the draft it feels like it was a lifetime ago I just can't believe how fast life is going, but I guess that's the way it is. When you start getting older, time seems to go by faster. I think part of it is when you're five years old, a year is a fifth of your life. When you're 50 years old, it's a 50th of your life. So it seems a lot shorter. I think it's more perception than reality. And the perception on the Dallas Cowboys is that they stink that they've done nothing to help themselves, that they're going to be a bad team. I, I'm listening to my son, a strange son, Philly 500, who thinks that the Cowboys are going to be third in the division. Um, but before we get all to that in the C.D. Lamb situation, um, I've got to give credit to 105.3 The Fan. Um, when you kill people for doing things wrong, you got to give them credit when they do things right as well, okay? You can't just be there for the negativity. you got to be there for the positive. And this morning, they are at a firehouse in Garland, Texas, and they're broadcasting from there, and they're reporting on the Dak Prescott criminal, uh, potential criminal charges uh, being filed. We talked about this, of course, last night, but let's go to the tape. He said that to you. You re no, recognize no, no. him? Re I, I, after he said that we had dinner together, oh, yeah. I was, and he said who it was, it was with his uh, his cousin Hector or friend Hector, I was like, oh, vicious thing. We got legal news last night mm -hmm. on the Cowboys. Dallas police found no evidence to support the claims of the woman who accused Dak of sexual assault and will not file criminal charges against the Cowboys quarterback. Yeah, which, I, I mean, I, I don't think legally that one is much of a surprise because the, you know, we were talking about something that is is very, you know, w was always going to be one that was, I think, going to play out in terms of on the civil side because it's something that happened allegedly seven years ago. They're, it's going to be tough, I think, to have any sort of the evidence that they need necessary to have that pursued. So uh, this is obviously a win for Dak, though, the fact that the criminal charges are not going forward. There will be the the civil suit, just, I assume, continuing in Collin County. But, um, no, this is definitely a big victory for, for Dak's side to say that criminal charges aren't going anywhere. I uh, texted Dak's attorney, Levi McCather, oh. and asked him if he wanted to come on. He sent me their statement and said, I'll think about it in the morning. I want to thank the DPD and district attorney's office for their thorough investigation of the allegations as we knew they would they found nothing in their extensive exploration of the facts that would support a criminal prosecution we're confident that at the end of law enforcement's investigation into the extortion they'll find the accuser and her attorney just as guilty as dak is innocent and as i've said from the beginning great football player even better human he would never assault any woman these false accusations were brought up seven years after the alleged events for one reason and one reason only to line the pockets of the accuser and her attorneys their behavior is an affront you go. to all the true survivors of sexual abuse fortunately for everyone involved justice will prevail and i believe a harsh punishment is coming for these extorters that is what Levi McCatherine sent me last night. It's a strong statement, and strong. it equals the the strong approach that Dak's side has taken the entire time, which is essentially, you know, Florio had brought bullshit. this up with us a couple months ago. And Florio will join us at 8 this morning. Ah, perfect. So Florio brought it up a couple months ago, that, or, or whenever this story first came out, that he's like, Dak really, you know, had an opportunity for this to, to stay in the shadows and said, no, we're going we're gonna to settle this up front. Like, like, we're going to put this out in the open. We're going to shine a light on it, right, we'll, and we'll, we're going to go ahead and tackle this. We'll kill that from there. So uh, I'm glad that they're reporting it first thing this morning when the original case being dismissed and then moved 
nobody actually covered it. So I'm glad that it's being covered now that there is more good news for Dak Prescott. Where he can focus in, well, I don't know that – here's what I will say. Because whether it's the contract situation, whether it's off-the-field issues such as this – I believe his people take care of all this stuff. His attorneys take care of it. His agent takes care of it. The one thing I can say about Dak Prescott is he works on being the best football player that he can be. And whether the Dallas Cowboys are the ones that end up paying him or if he's going elsewhere, I can guarantee you that he is going to be the best version of himself. And I dare say, I believe the Cowboys have the potential to be better on offense. And here's my my theory, parts of this why. But part of this will also depend – if we're going to have a lengthy holdout for C.D. Lamb. Now, here's what I want you to understand with um, the NFL in getting the CBA done, where the players got a little bit bigger piece of the pie. They ended up upping the players' compensation to, I believe, 48% of the gross revenue. Um, they ended up basically saying, we're not testing for weed anymore. So if you want to smoke weed, you know, because we care about your mental health. Um we're going to be a little more lenient on like the color socks and things that you wear, you know, things that the players look at, you know, they say, Oh man, this is great. You know, if I I want to, you know, get high, I'm, I'm okay. I can do that. What the NFL ended up getting in return, of course, was an extra game in the season. And they also put in what's known as the Zeke Elliott rule. If you remember, Zeke Elliott was the last player to really hold out into getting close to the season. The NFL owners decided we do not want to have these holdouts. And what you get with that is, is yeah, you can hold out in training camp and this, that, and the other, but those fines are not forgivable. And you start losing game checks when it comes to preseason. And so you probably will not see C.D. Lamb sit out the season. I can just guarantee you that. This is... You know, a shot across the bow, hey, I'm here, I want to get this thing done. And I think the Cowboys, much like Zach Martin last year, will get that deal done. I don't see C.D. Lamb holding out, and you're not seeing him during the season. But that being said, you do want him and Dak working together, getting their timing and stuff uh, right. Now, Dak Prescott has gone on board saying he's not worried about C.D. Lamb's absence and voluntary workouts that they're keeping in contact and stuff. And come July in training camp, they're roommates. And so he believes they'll have enough time to get familiar with each other again. What this does do, and maybe this is a good side benefit of this, is create more of a repertoire and more repetitions with Brandon Cooks. Because I don't see C.D. Lamb being able to do much more than what he did. You know, is it possible to get to 2,000 yards? Yeah, it's possible. But it's not – I mean, that basically would be the early games where he was getting 53 yards where he's getting a little bit more in each of those games, so to speak. But what you're really going to need to do is not so much get more production out of C.D. Lamb. In fact, you might be better suited if those numbers come down just a little bit and everybody else's elevate. If you start seeing Jake Ferguson – over a thousand yards. If you see Brandon Cooks getting back to being that thousand yard receiver that he's been with just about everywhere he's gone. If you're able to distribute the ball across the board, it will make it more difficult for defenses. And I think ultimately with the offense now being the second year of the Texas Coast, where we joked about it and called it the Texas Toast, because it looked like that offense was toasted um, early in the season, but started getting its rhythm after the bye week, now starting the second year in that system, they should start off on the ground running and doing really, really well. Now, I'm still concerned about the running game, but the thing about Mike McCarthy's offense is it's not predicated on just the running game. Very rarely did you see the Green Bay Packers at any of the times with Aaron Rodgers there a top 10 running team. They just don't. It's kind of secondary. So the... Running back by committee may be perfectly suited for what Mike McCarthy wants to do, where he really wants to be able to spread the ball. And now that you've got Tyler Guyton, who's actually right now a better pass blocker than run blocker, that may go well. And getting Zeke Elliott, who is really, really good at helping to chip and help being a pass blocker, who is not afraid to put his nose into a defender's chest 
to protect the quarterback may also be better suited for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, to finish this out this morning, I've, this hopefully will be the last day I've got to go on the road um, and work on this old farmhouse. Uh, it is about an hour and a half ride each way, so it's a big ride there and a big ride back. I'll be glad to get everything done there uh, until we head to Vermont in um, a week from Monday. Jeez, I'm always on the road. Um, I want to finish this off with Zeke Elliott, who says that he has unfinished business. So uh, it's great seeing him back out on the practice field. Uh, you know that that has to definitely be, make Dak Prescott feel more comfortable having his buddy because he's lost so many different players over the last few years. It's kind of like, you know, uh, the guys I came here with are all gone. How you guys doing? How you doing? Good, how you doing? Doing good. How's it feel to be back in the mix out here? Man, it feels good. I feel to be back home. Uh, you know, with my people. Did you take any, uh, go to a bag cage or anything before you came in? Kind of get yourself warmed up for some cuts? No, I actually didn't take any swings, so I'm kind of surprised about my performance, but yeah, it's actually kind of tiring up there. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about the decision to keep 15 instead of going back to 21 and kind of what was... What was your rationale on that? Uh, I just kind of look at it as a as a different era. Um, you know, I wore 15 last year. Um, I wanted to go back. As soon as they made the rule that running backs could wear the uh, single digits in the teams, I knew I wanted to switch, so it worked out. What do you want to prove in this new era? Um, you know, I'm just the guy on finished business. Um, here to chase their ring. You reportedly had other options in terms of free agency. Why was it important for you to come back to Dallas? Uh, it's just, I think it was important for me just to get back here uh, and finish, you know, what I started. Finish where I started. Obviously, best friends, you guys go back away. What was the conversation like between you and Dak when the decision was made that you were going to come back? Uh, you know, obviously, you know, me and Dak are close, so, you know, he, he wants me to come back, but, you know, he wasn't too pussy for disrespecting my decision, but uh, he definitely... I definitely felt the I felt the one. You trained with guys last year, even when you weren't part of the team. How much of that bond just goes beyond being part of the Cowboys and just the relationship you guys have? I mean, when you've been somewhere for so long and, and built those relationships, uh, those shared those share, share uh, memories, those shared connections, uh, I mean, it's it's not going to go away at the snap of the fingers. So, um, you know, I'm glad I'm able to come back. Being away from like Dallas, what perspective what perspective does that give you about being a Dallas Cowboy? Um, I mean, I had, a, I had a really good time in the You know, I, I really, uh, you know, appreciated that the organization. I was definitely great playing for Bill. Um, but, I mean, Dallas was home for me. Do you expect any, any major differences from when Kevin Moore was leading the offense versus Mike McCarthy because this is going to be his second year and your first year with him as an offensive play call? Do you um, sense any major differences between the two? Um, I mean, there, there's some differences, but, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of similarities, too, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of, you know, figuring all that out. You showed last mm -hmm. year that you have a lot left still. What do you feel like, from that regard, what you have to give to this team next this year? Uh, I mean, I think, I think you guys all know, you know, when I'm a game when I'm on the field. So, I mean, I'm going to do whatever I need to do, whatever I can do to, you know, help, help this team be successful. You always, your teammates always talk about how they love being a teammate with you and, and, and you know, just your impact in the locker room and everything. Does that help you? I mean, you were the dominant guy offensively when you were here before, and it's going to be a different role this time. Does that help you kind of adapt your kind of team approach to things as far as where you are individually in your career? Um, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm a football player. I love, I love this game. Um, you know, I think, I think I still am a dominant guy. I mean, I got, I got to go out there and prove that. But uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's some motivation. But uh, I think, I think we all know, you know, how I feel about uh, competing and, and, and leaving it all out there for my team. How do you feel like this running back room can come together and be really productive next season? Now, I think we got we got a lot of young guys, a lot of talented guys, um, you know, a lot of guys with different, different skill sets, and uh, so I'm looking forward to you know getting getting in that room, you know, getting to know those guys, and, and uh, you know helping them grow, grow their their football knowledge, and uh, you know kind of share some of my experience with them. How did it feel being back at off-season workouts yesterday? You know, it felt good. It felt good to be out there with the guys and uh, you know getting to work in. There you go. There you have Zeke Elliott.
He is I'm ready, to, get back ready to rock and roll. Right, I feel good. So the um, I've been playing MLB the show, so I, I got a. The question I got a, is, will the Dallas Cowboys be ready and be to be the best version of themselves? I hope that this isn't it, that we're done uh, doing things, but I have a feeling that the Cowboys are going to be making some other moves, and maybe, just maybe, they get a little bit bold. All right, good people, don't forget tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, tune in for our live stream. We'll have all the news on the Dallas Cowboys. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. They run. They laugh. I see the glow shining in